Hello and welcome to Interest Payment. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Today we're gonna to talk about the interest payment function. It's often used to compute the interest portion of a loan payment for a specific month. Stick around till exercise three. I'll show you how to turn this single function into a loan payment schedule. Let's head to the first exercise, exercise one. Let's say we have a loan with the following terms. Loan amount 10,000, months 12, annual interest rate 5%. For any given month of this loan, we'd like to find out how much of our monthly payment goes to interest and therefore how much goes to principal. First, let's start with computing the total monthly payment. For that, we'll use the payment function equals PMT. The first argument is the rate. That's gonna be our annual rate in C9 divided by 12, comma. The number of periods is the number of months. That's the value in C8, comma. Present value is our loan amount. That's the value in C7. Close function and enter. We can see that the total monthly payment is 85607. And our question is, in any given month, how much of that monthly payment goes to interest? To calculate that, we'll use the interest payment function equals IPMT. The first argument is the rate. Once again, that's our annual rate divided by 12, comma, the period. Let's say we want to figure this out for the first month, comma, total number of periods, that's the loan term in months, that's the value in C8, comma, present value, that's our loan amount, that's again the value in C7. Close function and enter. So now we can see that in month one, 4167 of the monthly payment is allocated to interest. And what if we wanted to check the interest in a different period? Well, instead of having to manually come in here and modify our formula, let's go ahead and point the period argument to the value in C13. And that way we can type any month number into C13 without having to go modify our formula. So in month one, it's 4167. In month two, it's 3827. In month three, it's 3487. And what about month 12? Well, only 355 is going to interest at that point. So that's the basic usage of the interest payment function. Now the question is, what if we wanted to see the interest for all periods in the loan? Well, we don't really want to have to sit here and type one, two, three, four, five. So can we just make like a schedule? That takes us to the next exercise, exercise two. First, let's start by listing out all the month numbers. To do that, we're gonna use the sequence function. Equals sequence. And we're simply gonna point it to the number of months in our loan. Close function and enter. And now this is fully dynamic. So when there's 12 months, we get 12 rows. If there's six months in the loan, this dynamically updates and now shows six. If there's three, it's three. And if there's 360, it goes all the way down to 360 and you get the idea. Let's set this back to 12. Now that we have our month column, let's populate our interest column. For that, we'll use the interest payment function equals IPMT. The rate is our annual rate divided by 12. The period is the value in the cell to the left. In order to automatically have this formula fill itself down, we're gonna use the spill reference operator and it's gonna use that whole dynamic range. Comma, the total number of periods is this, comma, the present value is this. Close function and enter. And now we have a dynamic schedule that shows each month in the loan, along with the interest payment for each period in the loan. And once again, this is fully dynamic. So we can change this as desired. Now, what if we also wanted to calculate the amount that's applied to principal and the total? Well, let's take a look at that in the next exercise. Exercise three. We'll populate each of these four columns one at a time. Month, interest, principal, and payment. Let's start with month. Once again, we'll use the sequence function. Equal sequence of the number of months in C8, close function and enter. Got it. Interest equals IPMT. The rate is our annual rate divided by 12. The period is the value in the cell to the left. Add the spill reference operator so it's dynamic. The total number of periods is the value in C8. And the present value is our loan amount in C7. Close function and enter. After interest is calculated, the amount of the monthly payment that's allocated to principal is the difference. So we can simply go equals monthly payment minus value in the cell to the left. Once again, to make it dynamic, we're gonna use the spill reference operator and enter. And just to make sure that interest plus principal equals our payment, let's go ahead and compute the last column. It equals the interest amount, spill reference operator, 
plus the principal amount, spill reference operator. Enter. As expected, this is 85607 for each period. And what's nice is this is fully dynamic. So you can change the number of months, you can change the loan amount, and you can change the interest rate. And what if we wanted to calculate the total interest, total principal, and total amount paid? Well, we can use a sum function for that. Equal sum of C15, spill reference operator, close function, and enter. Total principal equals sum D15, spill reference operator, close function, enter. Total paid is equal to sum E15, spill reference operator, close function, and enter. And now we got it. So that's how we can use the interest payment function along with a few dynamic formulas to build a full loan schedule. It shows interest, principal, and total payment for each month along with the totals. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 